Hey, welcome back everybody. Happy Sunday and happy kind of into 4th of July weekend here. Hopefully we uh, had a good one. Hopefully saw some fireworks and spent some time with family. Uh, unfortunately though, Mother Nature is also giving off her own fireworks in the form of Tropical Storm Barrel, likely to become a hurricane barrel once again uh, before making landfall into Texas late tonight and into early Monday morning. Uh, so in today's video, I'm going to run you through all of the latest, the latest storm surge, the latest wind impacts, rainfall impacts, and potential tornado impacts well inland uh, with this storm system. So again, we're going to talk all of, uh, talk about all of that uh, in today's video. Now, if you haven't already subscribed, definitely consider doing so. Like the video if you like it and comment. Let me know where you're watching from and kind of how you're preparing for these potential impacts. Uh, with all that said, let's go ahead and jump right into things. Again, I want to give you as much information uh, in kind of a condensed amount of time here as possible. So uh, starting right off on satellite imagery, looking at barrel this morning, uh, center circulation is kind of right under this area of deep convection. Now, uh, yesterday, a lot of people were kind of counting out barrels saying, well, you know, it looks a lot more raggedy than it once did, especially late last night. There was a period where uh, barrel almost didn't even look like a tropical system. So much of this dry air had ingested itself into the storm. Uh, and that is still the case. I'll go ahead and kind of draw where this dry air is. Uh, and uh, this is all due to some shear that is kind of getting just driven uh, right into um, portions of the storm. Not necessarily the core of the storm, but uh, nonetheless still a big area kind of dealing with some of that uh, drier air funneling on in. And we talked about this even a couple of days ago. We mentioned that being a very real possibility. But uh, this morning, we are seeing some signs of strengthening. Again, we have had this um, consistent area of convection over the center of the storm, uh, which is going to allow that center of circulation to kind of restack itself a little bit and uh, become slightly more organized. And uh, that is definitely something that we will be watching for here. Uh, and we now can uh, luckily look at radar imagery for this storm. And uh, it does a pretty good job here of kind of lining up with what uh, our overall uh, satellite imagery is showing. Obviously, here is the center of the storm, the eye, if you will, even though it's not uh, an eye on satellite, uh, but still, I guess, uh, eye look on radar. Um, and again, here's kind of the core of that storm. You'll notice most of the precipitation around the core uh, is off to the west and the south, while, um, again, this kind of pocket of dry air has eroded much of the precipitation on the northwestern side of the storm. Now, there is still some precipitation on the northwestern side of the storm. Again, these bands, uh, these feeder bands are now kind of rotating into Texas, and again, impacts starting as soon as today with this storm. Uh, again, due to some of this precipitation, uh, but the core of the storm is still well offshore and not fully organized yet. So uh, that is good. Obviously, we want a disorganized system. Sorry, I just uh, dropped my phone and slammed it on the ground. Um, uh, anyway, though, we do want a disorganized system that will help keep things uh, you know, less uh, less dramatic upon landfall. But unfortunately, Barrel does have all day today uh, to once again re-strengthen itself. And uh, we've been watching uh, uh, some uh, recon kind of fly through the storm here. And uh, pressure has dropped since yesterday. Yesterday, we were more in the mid-990s to upper 990s. This morning, uh, pressure now dropping back into the lower 990s, potentially now uh, upper 980s. So that strengthening trend is beginning. And again, I don't want you to let your guard down because of what you saw yesterday. Uh, yesterday was expected. Yesterday was going to be a day that the storm kind of just mellowed out a little bit uh, as it kind of just slowly reorganized. Today was always going to be the day of rapid intensification if we saw it. And again, we still got basically 24 hours, at least 18 hours um, to continue that process. And you'll already notice here uh, some stronger winds being found by recon here. Uh, you know, in that upper echelon of tropical storm force. And uh, they're going to continue to sample this throughout the day and uh, we'll get updated data. Uh, so for real-time data, you can go to tropicaltidbits.com to find this or just uh, follow me on Twitter and I'll try to keep you updated with the latest recon passes through the storm. All right, latest cone from the National Hurricane Center and latest visible satellite imagery. Again, on visible satellite, I mean, we've got a pretty well-defined storm here. Uh, we've got these, you know, bands on the outer end that are, you know, kind of extending out from the storm. It's got that tropical storm look to it. Again, though, that pocket of dry air is just the real killer right now for Barrel, and it's been continuing to fight that. 
Uh, and again, has all day today to continue to try to fight that off. And I think bare minimum, we get a hurricane at landfall. National Hurricane Center agrees. Uh, this is 2 a.m. this morning, forecasting a strong Category 1, borderline Category 2 hurricane uh, working into coastal Texas here, uh, right near uh, kind of uh, the Port Lavaca area and uh, uh, the San Antonio Bay area, seeing uh, the most likely direct landfall. And because of that, we do have hurricane warnings up in red on this map from just south of Corpus Christi all the way up north here uh, towards uh, Lake Jackson uh, and uh, Jamaica Beach area of Texas. Hurricane watches extending north of there uh, up towards uh, Houston Bay, or I guess uh, I think y'all call it something else out here, but uh, whatever bay this is that uh, is next to Houston. Uh, I think uh, Galveston Bay is what we call this one, right? Maybe. You can let me know in the comments if I got that right or if I completely butchered it. But either way, um, hurricane warnings in red, tropical storm warnings in blue, uh, and tropical storm watches there in the yellow, and hurricane watches in the pink. So those are the current watches, warnings, and advisories. Uh, and if we look at this track, again, as I mentioned, impacts are going to go well inland. Tomorrow afternoon, still dealing with a tropical storm up into the Houston area. Uh, and this thing will finally weaken to a depression by tomorrow overnight going into Wednesday. Um, or I guess, uh, yeah, going into Tuesday rather. Uh, so again, weakening will definitely happen. But this track again takes us all the way up even into the Ohio River Valley with barrel. Uh, and uh, we're going to see, you know, a post-tropical system all the way up into potential uh, places like Michigan, uh, Indiana, Ohio, Wisconsin, uh, Illinois and Missouri. So we're going to see a big swath of rain move inland and potentially even a tornado threat continue inland as well. And uh, we'll mention that here in just a moment. All right, so let's talk about uh, some model data here. We'll start uh, with uh, the high resolution rapid refresh. I think it's doing a pretty good job of handling this. And let me go ahead and scroll this back down so we are functioning properly. Um, all right, so Again, the HER model, I think, doing a relatively good job here with this storm system uh, and showing us where it's going. So uh, here we go throughout the day today, obviously an organizing tropical storm, getting closer to hurricane status off the coast of Texas. Uh, and uh, we're going to see those feeder bands continue to work inland throughout the day. Gusty winds and heavy rainfall and a couple isolated tornadoes are going to be the main threat with those today. Uh, but then you'll notice overnight tonight into early tomorrow morning, again, probably about 5 a.m. Central Time, uh, give or take a couple hours. Landfall will begin here with, at this point, likely hurricane barrel. Uh, and the Iowa will move ashore, very gusty winds, torrential rainfall, storm surge is going to be a problem here, especially on that right-hand side of the storm. Uh, and I'll show you those surge values here in just a moment. But just know, uh, surge will definitely be a problem here as well uh, with barrel. Now, as we get this uh, further ahead into time, uh, you'll notice uh, Barrel continues moving inland throughout the day Monday, weakening obviously, but still very heavy rainfall falling, uh, very impressive feeder bands on the right-hand side there, uh, and we can see a real fire hose of moisture into Houston Bay here. Uh, you'll notice uh, the model's picking up on this very specific kind of banding feature on uh, the eastern side of the storm, uh, and that's uh, right over Houston Bay. So do not be surprised to see some flooding in Houston tomorrow, both from storm surge and um, from fresh water that is falling out of the sky uh, in the form of rain. Uh, so again, could see some flooding issues from that. Also an isolated tornado threat here. A lot of these bands are going to have embedded rotation. Expect to see multiple tornadoes in the Houston area tomorrow. Uh, and kind of even up through much of East Texas is going to be something we need to watch here. Uh, and as we move this throughout the day Monday, that continues. That tornado threat continues. The flooding threat continues. Uh, the wind threat continues but dies down throughout the day inland. Uh, and then we get into overnight Monday into Tuesday. We're going to continue this tornado threat here on the eastern side of this storm where plenty of embedded rotation is going to still exist uh, with some of these storms through Louisiana, East Texas, into Arkansas. Uh, and then, you know, Tuesday afternoon, uh, potentially, uh, we'll do it all again with more of a tornado threat and flooding threat uh, with barrel. Now, wind gust wise, uh, what is it looking like? Well, we can go ahead and show you that as well here. Um, let me kind of uh, get this to work properly. I think that's going to hopefully do its job. Let's see. 
Uh, yeah, perfect. So again, wind's going to pick up throughout the day today along the Texas coastline, but the worst of it is overnight tonight into early tomorrow morning, winds gusting into hurricane strength, uh, potentially gusting up near 90, 100 miles an hour. Sustained winds likely going to be between 80 and 90, uh, but very strong wind gust again right into Port Lavaca here, San Antonio Bay, uh, and uh, just south of Galveston Bay. Uh, so kind of in between um, those areas going to see the worst of the system as the core moves ashore. We are definitely going to see wind damage. This is not just a rainfall threat with this storm. Uh, very strong winds. And then even throughout the day, Monday, as we get into the afternoon, look at these strong winds gusting up near 60, 70 miles an hour uh, well inland, up uh, into Houston, north uh, areas of Houston, uh, south of Dallas here, and into East Texas. Very strong winds. Again, going to be a problem throughout the day Monday before finally winds uh, die down a little bit going into Tuesday, but still gusting up near tropical storm strength here uh, for portions of uh, the Texarkana area. So wind is also going to be a big time issue with this storm system. Also, storm surge is going to be something we need to watch. The worst of it, again, I think uh, kind of between uh, San uh, Luis Pass and um, uh, kind of Matagordo Bay uh, with about four to six foot of storm surge. So that that's enough to cause problems. That's uh, even more than we saw with Alberto a couple uh, weeks ago back into June. We remember that storm uh, was only a weak tropical storm and had... Um, big time storm surge implications with that. So uh, anytime, obviously, you get a hurricane making landfall, storm surge going to be a problem really for the entire Texas coastline. Uh, we'll at minimum likely see at least two feet of surge, but uh, the worst of it here kind of, again, in this blue area where four to six feet of surge uh, from Matagordo Bay upwards towards San Luis Pass. We'll see that. Galveston Bay, Corpus Christi, three to five feet of surge. Uh, still nothing to write off, obviously going to cause problems. Uh, so, you know, if you're in very low-lying areas, you're going to want to not be there uh, as that surge is coming in. Rainfall going to also be a big-time problem here. You'll notice a big swath of very heavy rain, likely at least half a foot of rain, especially down here for coastal Texas. Again, kind of those same areas that are getting the worst of the surge. Isolated spots could hit near a foot of rainfall. Uh, but again, a lot of folks going to have freshwater flooding issues tomorrow up into East Texas and up into the Texarkana area. And then eventually later this week up into Little Rock and uh, the St. Louis area going to get some uh, gusty uh, or excuse me, uh, heavy rainfall totals as well out of the storm system. All right, tornado threat, also something I mentioned here today, a 5% chance of a tornado within a 25-mile radius here through much of the Houston area. So again, Houston, you're not in the center of the storm, uh, but you're going to still feel the effects from flooding, tornadoes, and gusty winds. So, uh, you know, make sure you're taking this serious. Again, those feeder bands moving ashore, these tornadoes are the kind of quick-hitting tornadoes. Uh, and a lot of times they're not going to be warned just because uh, radar's not going to even pick them up in time by the time they're dropping on the ground. I can tell you from personal experience, uh, these kind of low-topped cells, uh, they're just really difficult to detect the tornadoes uh, that form off of these setups. So, um, again, got to be prepared today for that into Houston and then into tomorrow, uh, all of East Texas and much of Louisiana up into Arkansas as well. Uh, be prepared for the threat of some isolated tornadoes uh, with this storm system as it works on through. And again, these threats could expand inland. We'll talk about that more in depth tomorrow. Uh, but uh, if you're watching up into the Ohio River Valley, don't let your guard down either uh, because you could have some problems here as well. All right, significant tornado parameters. Just going to quickly show you this uh, today. Again, down near Houston Bay, going to have problems, uh, or Galveston Bay, um, whatever we're calling it. <laughs> Sorry, again, my geography in this part of the country isn't uh, superb. I'll work on it. Uh, but again, significant tornado parameters kicking up this afternoon and continuing throughout the overnight, uh, even getting a little more enhanced overnight and into Monday, uh, especially into East Texas here. Look at this flare-up of the SIGTOR uh, values from uh, kind of areas of... Uh, you know, East Texas and getting into portions of western Louisiana, again, up into the Texarkana area overnight Monday and into Tuesday. Could even see a nocturnal tornado threat with this. So uh, got to have a way to get those watches and warnings should they be issued for your area. 
All right, very briefly talking about inland impacts outside of just uh, the uh, Texas area. Rainfall going to be a problem. Chance of at least an inch of rain falling within a 24-hour period. Very high today, or I guess I should say tomorrow and Tuesday through Texas. Uh, but look at this, riding right up through St. Louis into Chicago, uh, northern Indiana, Michigan going to get a lot of rain out of this. Also, the northeast, I'm watching you. Uh, we could see, you know, some enhancement from a front as well as the remnants of barrel really increasing those torn, uh, excuse me, uh, rainfall risks, but also tornado threat could be a problem as well, uh, you know, in those areas. And again, we'll talk about that a little bit more tomorrow uh, as we get a little bit closer uh, to this storm system. So. Uh, again, that's what I've got for you today. A lot of impacts on the table here from tornadoes, flooding, strong winds, and storm surge. Got to have a way to uh, be prepared for all of that. And obviously, at this point, it's kind of just a watch and see what Barrel does uh, throughout the day today before landfall uh, very early tomorrow morning. Alrighty, y'all have a great rest of your week and stay safe out there, and I'll see you all tomorrow.